Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Ahmed al I'm a fifth year medical student at the University of Nicosia. Can I quickly confirm your name and date of birth, please? Ian McRoy, 23rd of May, 1946. Okay. And how would you like to be addressed? Is Ian okay? Yes. Please. All right, Ian. Today I've been asked by my supervisor to perform a cranial nerve examination. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had one of these on before? Never, never. Okay, have you heard cranial nerves before? Never, okay. no, no. So these are uh, the nerves that supply our faces and necks. So these are the nerves that, you know, mm -hmm. um, wire us up in our okay. heads. <laughs> okay. And this involves observing some of your movements, getting you to do some facial expressions, uh, checking your eyesight and um, checking your um, reflexes and muscles around your neck and face. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah, sure. All right, are you happy to proceed? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, one of the most important things when it comes to a medical examination is being able to observe the patient. Through observation, you may be able to get tips and clues which you may not be able to elicit during the examination itself. So first of all, we check the patient's surrounds for any wheelchairs for any medical devices, walking frames, or any medication that might suggest an ongoing problem. And also, we inspect the patient for any scars, scars of previous surgery such as a tracheostomy, a, any muscle wasting, any hypertrophy, any um, fasciculations, uh, any skin changes. These are the things that might suggest there might be an ongoing pathology. Now, moving on to our examination, are we ready to proceed? Sure. Okay. So cranial, cranial nerve number one is the olfactory nerve. This nerve is usually not tested, but we can always start out asking, have you noticed any change of your taste, or sense of your taste or smell recently? No, not that I can recall, no, no, sure. Okay, perfect. And moving on to the cranial nerves number two, three, four, and six, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens. These nerves are tested together because they all support the eyesight and vision. Now we're going to do some specific tests for your vision. Does mm -hmm. that sound okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. So first of all, we're going to begin with visual acuity. For visual acuity, we're going to put this up. This is called a Snelling chart. Okay. And I would like you to look at this chart and read all the letters from the top to the bottom. Okay. Do you usually wear glasses? I do. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we're going to do this examination with the glasses. Okay, and also, have you noticed any change in your vision recently? No, no, last time I went to the optician, everything was okay. Mm -hmm. And do you have a better eye, one eye seeing better than the other? Yes, the, the right is worse than the left. Okay, perfect. Now that we've established that, we can move on to reading the Snellen chart. Ideally, this is placed six meters away from the patient. If you can mm -hmm. get up and read the Snellen chart from top to the bottom. And now we're gonna keep your glasses, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna cover one of your eyes okay. and we're gonna get you to read the Snellen chart with the other eye. Okay. And then we're gonna repeat this with the other one. Okay, okay? Yeah. so let's get started. E, H, N, D, F, N, P, T, X, Z, U, Z, D, T, F, D, F, N, P, Mm, Z, P, M, I think. Okay, so with the, with the left eye, the patient was able to read up to the fifth line correctly. On the sixth one, there was an error. So we report a visual acuity of 6 over 12 for this left eye. For, let's move on to the right eye mm -hmm. and cover your left. And please read all the <coughs> lines. Okay, E, H, N, D, F, N, P, T, X, Z, U, Z, T, N. Hmm, now it's a little fuzzy from there. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, so for the right eye, we also report a visual acuity of 6 over 12 because the patient was able to read up to the fifth line correctly but made a mistake on the sixth one. Okay, mm -hmm. you can sit down. Okay. The next test we're going to perform is for your peripheral vision. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to cover one eye, cover, if you can cover one of your eyes, okay, and I'm going to cover the opposite. And I'm going to ask you to tell me when you see my hand wiggling. No. Perfect. No. Perfect. No. No. Perfect. And then we're going to do it with the opposite eye. I'm going to cover my opposite and tell me, just directly look at my face. No. No. 
Okay? No. No. Perfect. It's very important that the patient looks directly at your face and not your fingers. So the patient's face should be directed at you, looking directly at you, and see your finger wiggling through his peripheral vision. Okay. Now we're going to look at your eye movements. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my finger and let me know if at any point you have double vision. Okay? If you see double. Okay. Okay. So again, keep your face and looking at me in this direction. Mm -hmm. Don't move your head when I'm moving my finger. Okay. Just follow my finger with your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we'll start here. It's important that you pause a little bit during the extremes so that if there is any nystagmus, you get to observe that the patient is having nystagmus. Did you have any double vision at any no, point? No, no, nothing. Fantastic, okay. So moving on to the next eye test. We have a lot of eye tests today. <laughs> moving on to the next one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to observe your eyes first, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to observe the pupils in your eyes, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to comment on the symmetry, the shape, and the size of the pupils. And then I'm going to shine some light into your eyes mm -hmm. and check your eye reflexes. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, first of all, we'll look at the eyes. If you can... Perfect. Um, what we're doing is we're observing the pupils in terms of size, symmetry, and shape. And everything appears to be fine. You can put your glasses back on. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shine some light through your eyes, and I'm going to check for your reflexes. Okay. I know I told you to put your glasses back on, but I'm going to ask you to remove them again no so I can see your reflexes. Okay. If you like, what you can do is you can put your hand in between the two eyes so the light doesn't get into the other eye and you can actually assess both eyes independently. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just look at me straight, approach from the side and look for a constriction in the eye that you're approaching and a consensual constriction in the other eye that you're not shining light. Again, look for constriction in the eye that you're shining light and a consensual constriction in the other eye. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the light between your eyes now, mm -hmm. okay? If, if, if it disturbs you at all, just let me know, okay? Because no, 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 no. it's not very comfortable to have your light. You have, have light in your eyes, I know. So normally what you should be observing is a constriction and a consensual constriction as you go foot through between the two eyes. Perfect. Now this concludes the eye examination, the eye part of our examination. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to cranial nerve number five, which is the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve has a sensory and a motor component. With the trigeminal nerve, what we need to do is we need to test both the sensory and the motor parts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the sensation on your face. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so first of all, we're going to start with a cotton wool. This is what a cotton wool feels like. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, put this cotton wool on different parts of your face mm -hmm. and let me know when you feel it, okay? Okay. Just close your eyes. We're going to run the cotton wool through V1, V2, and V3 branches of the trigeminal nerve. Okay. Yes. 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 Excellent. Okay. And even though you're not required to perform this during an OSCE station, it makes sense to mention that you could repeat this with a neurotip. Okay. Now, I want to feel 